Welcome back to Be Productive. Working with leaders, sales professionals, entrepreneurs, one of the things that I know is the best way for us to really guard ourselves and to be as productive as we can is to make sure that we are trained ourselves. So to talk about some of the things that we need to keep in mind, especially when it comes to our security of all that intellectual property that we have is my friend, Greg Schaefer. So Greg, welcome back to the show. Thanks again for having me. So we're talking about security awareness training. You know, it's one thing to just say that we have the systems in place. It's a whole other thing to make sure we're using them efficiently and effectively, which means we have to know them and know how to work them right. So what are some of the components of effective security awareness programs that you really help your people with? The security awareness training is really both a security and a compliance issue. It's compliance because... Most regulations and frameworks require it, at least some sort of basic thing once a year, something like that. Um, but it's an information security issue as well, because that's often how breaches begin. They Bad guys, bad criminals take advantage of lack of training, lack of awareness. We get distracted with something or another. We click on a link and then bad things happen. But if you want to go beyond simple compliance and the basics, you really should with regards to the security awareness program. You'll want to ensure that the program has the executive buy-in, not only both from support, but from participation. There's a lot of instances where the CEO of a company, they'll exempt themselves from doing the training because they figure that that's not something that they really need to do when really in, the risk is more on them um, than it is on some of the other folks within the company. So it's even more important that they should participate in the training. And plus, then you also have the leadership by example, which is very important. If the CEO doesn't think it's important, why should I? So that's very important to have that buy-in from the top. And then the executive leadership team really needs to work with information security to understand the risks that they're trying to uh, mitigate with tra training. We've talked about risk assessments before, and this is another aspect of how risk assessments are important because you want to train based on what your risks are. So like in your industry, for example, you might be a, um, a clinic that, uh, so you have healthcare issues and then HIPAA would come into play. You might also take credit card payments, in which case PCI would come into play. So your training should align with what it is you're actually doing. It should be current. Um, it also should include phishing simulations. We talked about that before as well, where that's a phishing email is basically one that comes in that tries to get you to do something. Well, if we practice those simulations, then we build what I like to call muscle memory. I mean, if you think about like athletes training, they practice, they practice their skill set. So why should we not practice our information security skill set as well too? That's the main purpose for that. So those are the main things. Other things like in-house awareness, uh, newsletters usually work pretty well, um, mm -hmm. are other components. And you definitely want to make sure that it's effective. You have to measure the effectiveness. And you have to then adjust the program based on the feedback of the measurements. Absolutely. And, you know, I really appreciate the fact that you talk about this has to come from the top down. And, and people need to understand this because, you know, it, it's teaching them and training them, you know, what do we even need to look for? What are these items that are happening? I, I heard of a company and the employee who was a pretty senior, you know, level person opened up an email from someone that was a friend or at least thought it was. And mm -hmm. again, it what took them down. And I mean, it took them out of commission for months trying to, you know, backtrack. And so again, really making sure that everybody knows because they're getting very creative into how they capture our attention. So again, training on what we need to be looking for, what we need to be aware of, the pros and the cons of all of these. And you're right, it's, it's everybody is affected. Now you mentioned measurement and we've got to be able to have some measuring tools to know if things are really effective. Talk to us a little bit about the measuring effectiveness and how do we, how do we know if something's going to be effective? Well, some some metrics will be kind of basic and e easy to 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 pick out, and that should be like, for example, we talked about phishing just a moment ago. The the number of, for example, phishing emails that one employee clicks on in a given period, usually it's a year. So if you have somebody that clicks on one during a twelve month period, if you do monthly phishing exercises, well, um, 
sometimes things happen and you make a mistake. But if you have someone who's clicked on it three, four or five times, you've got an issue there. You need to focus some more training. It could be one-on-one -on -one training. It could be extra courses. You need to address that risk there. And then you could also look at holistically the aggregate of the number of clicks that you have in an organization, clicks being uh, clicking on a nefarious link in a phishing email. And, and a good number, uh, people will vary uh, with different opinions on this, but I like to say, if you can get down below 3%, meaning that during any sort of exercise, only 3% of your users, your employees have clicked on an email, well, that's pretty good. Because again, you're never going to get to zero unless you're a really mm -hmm. small organization or you're sending out really easy um, phishing email exercises. Now, if you find that it's too low, well, then you'll want to adjust your exercise complexity. Most platforms that provide the phishing um, email service, this sort of testing, they allow you to configure different levels of complexity. Because the goal here is not to get a good score. The goal here is to teach people and to, like I said before, <laughs> exercise their muscle memory. Mm -hmm. uh, other metrics could be, could be a little bit more indirect. So just briefly, a real world example from a financial institution, they were emailing um, documents to their phone, like they would take a picture with their phone of the uh, customer's uh, driver's license. And the information security risks there are pretty obvious, but the employee was just trying to be productive. That's what we're all trying to do, um, yeah. but didn't realize that there was a better way to do that, a sanctioned way that is just as productive as the way that they were trying to do. So the awareness to train them, do it the mm -hmm. right way, follow the proper procedure, um, and also ask for feedback with regards to the security program. That's not really a metric in itself, but you never want to have a security program that's dry. You don't want to have somebody reading off a PowerPoint bullet or something like that. It's it already to... dry information. We got to make it as <laughs> engaging as we can, right? Right. It has to be interesting. Yeah. I love that. So, you know, you mentioned the idea that we want to have leadership involved. You mentioned some ideas of, you know, being able to do webinars, newsletters, of some of those things. But when we're rolling these programs out, what do you find are some of the biggest or most common challenges in implementing a training program? Well, certainly what we just talked about as far as it being interesting. You, you, mm -hmm. you, and and there, there are different platforms, training platforms make this interesting. The, whether it be through gamification or it be through um, creating a storyline. There's one product that I'm thinking of right now that actually has, it's almost like a little TV series. So like 10 or 12 or 15 episodes that tell a story in five minute increments. And each one of those stories has an information security awareness training lesson in it. Um, you can, you can, ensure that if you can make it interesting, then people are going to buy into it. That's part of the key as well, too. You want to make sure that people um, understand that they have a role in this, that if something bad happens to the information within the company, it could mean that they could lose their job, not because of anything punitive, but because of, of just the fact that the company could suffer financial losses. And on the punitive um, aspect, you should never make this a punishment. And I know one particular example from years ago, a chief information security officer of a bank, they would implement um, a bonus reduction for each one of the clicks that somebody did in a phishing uh, test. And then what happens there is that you've gone the other way. You've lost right. the trust between information security and um, the business and morale went down. And as a chief information security officer, you really need to have that good relationship. But really, what it comes down to, I think the biggest challenge is just making sure everybody understands the why. Don't tell them just what to do, but tell mm -hmm. them the why, because at that point in time, then the buy-in will be a lot easier. So true. And that's something that I work with my leaders on all the time, is you can't just say, here's the stuff. If you can explain the science behind it, the why behind it, people understand the importance of it. So I think that's really great. So, you know, Greg, you always bring so much value. And I know that you have been doing this for a long time. Where's the best place for people to find you if they want to reach out and not only learn more, but maybe even hire you? Uh, head to our website, vcsoservices.com. There's a little button on top that says 
click here. There it is on the screen, schedule an appointment, and that'll get 15 minutes on my calendar, and I'd be happy to talk to you. Fantastic. So you talk about your calendar. I, I'm going to throw you a curveball here, and I'd love to ask you, being that we're on a show called Be Productive, you've already shared some great ways to help companies be productive. What is one of your best tips for yourself personally that helps you stay productive? I script my day the day before. And yeah. that means I have everything laid out. Somebody tries to get a meeting with me, uh, like today, if they tried to get a meeting at eight o'clock in the morning or 8.30 or even two o'clock in the afternoon. No, I've got it already all planned out. Unless it's an emergency, um, I, I prefer, I defer to another day. I think it's important. Time is the one thing that we don't have an unlimited quantity of. And it's important to protect our time more than anything else to be productive. Because once you start getting off on tangents, then you lose focus on everything that you do, that you're doing. So beautiful. Well, great. Thank you again for bringing so much value. And for those of you that are watching, remember, you've got to get yourself trained as a leader. You've got to make sure your people are trained, knowing what to look for, knowing the importance of why we are putting these you know, practices in place, because it's about helping all of us to not just safeguard ourselves, but when we have the systems in place, then we're going to be able to run more efficiently and be able to stay productive. So stay tuned because we'll be right back for more.